Mm-hmm. I don't think true. most women realize that the guys they friend zone wants to fuck them or date them. I don't think so. I have too many guy friends for that to be true. Hmm. People are going to be watching this and make this girl so incorrect. <laughs> so... <laughs> Guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Wingman Podcast. I'm Justin Mark, your co-host. I'm joined here with our other host, Matt Levine. How's it going? <laughs> today, we have a very special guest. Is it me? It is uh, you. That's it's you. Yeah. <laughs> well, my name's Jess. Uh, Hi, Jess. How do we know Jess? Uh, I met her at the club like 10 days ago. Yeah. 10 days ago. Pretty. Now she's our friend. Yeah. I rolled out of bed a few hours ago. And I, I text her in the like morning. I'm like, yo, come over. And uh, she's like, yeah, I'm on my way. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to get in bed. And she came over, <laughs> had some drinks. Now we're here. We're on the podcast. So what time is it right now? It's, uh, it's fucking almost 3.30 in the morning. 3.30 in the morning. All that being said, it's fine. It's cool. Yeah. I am exhausted. Feels like lunchtime. I do not know how you guys are up and so. You know why? It's because we're nocturnal. Yeah. yeah. The party never sleeps, baby. <laughs> we, we never stop the party. Just keep it going. <laughs> Dude, I don't think I've ever slept earlier than like 12 o'clock or even 1 a.m. Ever? I'm sure like the last like, like six years probably. Oh, dude, definitely oh, in the past wow. like year. Yeah. Uncommon. Uh, I do remember back it, like 11 months ago. Uh huh. I went to bed at like 9 p.m. once. That's so weird. That's pretty much it. That's really weird. It's because it was COVID lockdowns. But yeah, now we go to the club every night. Hot girls every night. Partying. Yep, that's a lot. It's gone crazy. <laughs> All that fun shit. Well, you work in the nightlife. I work in the nightlife. Yeah. Like, what do you what do you expect, right? So we're gonna go to bed at six, seven a.m. I don't morning. think it's healthy. It's pro- I, I, mean, I feel like it's gonna catch up to me I one don't day. No, man. I like the thing is, I still get twelve to fourteen hours of sleep every fucking day, yeah. which is insane. Dude, we like, went to bed at ten a.m. today. Yeah, it's not good. That was not it's good. Really silly. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're facetiming each other at nine a.m. It's like, yeah, we gotta go to bed. Not yeah, know how you do that. Yeah. Well, just you messaged me. You were messaging me at ten a.m. and I was like, babe, I haven't slept in like thirty hours. Awake. <laughs> good morning uh, <laughs> this is um, this is why she's so tired she was messaging me at 10 a.m before i even want to yeah. sleep aren't you working tomorrow yeah it's yeah, fine excited well, thanks exciting. for being on the podcast jess what's your instagram we'll My tag instagram you with jess and queen L. cool go follow her guys <laughs> so uh jess i have a question for you what is you got to talk on the mic what's uh up? what is your body count Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, I can check. I don't know off the top. Can I see your head. list? No. <laughs> I feel like most girls have have a pretty solid list. Is that like yeah standard? Can I see your list, Jess? No. I'll show you I my list. Don't tell anybody though that I'll show you my list. list. Yeah, Justin definitely has a list. I don't have a list. I don't. I don't have a list either. I have a journal of like every day since I was like yeah, I seventeen. Know. Can I see? I have a number. <laughs> I feel like what, what is have... it? What's the number? I don't know. Guess. I'm gonna guess fifty five, sixty. <laughs> I, would, I would, I would honestly guess the same thing. Really? Yeah. It's Toronto, baby. All right. Yeah. I, the average girl by the time she's nineteen has like a seventy body count here in the city. That's quite silly. By the time That's she's twenty one, she's got three sugar daddies. Atrocious. <laughs> Why? What's the amount of girls that we asked that to? I feel like we should have an official survey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I don't judge. And I don't even personal fuck. I'm just research. curious. It, it it literally is personal research. I'm genuinely curious. And I'm, we're not here to judge you. No one here is judging you. If I share, are you guys going to share? Yeah, I'll share mine. Okay, start with Sure. Uh, mine's roughly 300 women that my penis has been inside, uh, inside their bodies. Sheesh, that's a yeah. lot. 300? Uh, yeah, and then like, I've like fooled around with other girls too, right? Like oral fingering, other shit. Like, it smells like cat know. to me. I don't know. <laughs> All right. 300. Yeah, honestly, I was a slut in college. Okay. Still am. Yeah. Don't, don't tell my girlfriend. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty exciting because I'm pretty sure I've only told like two, one or two people in my life. Well, fuck it. Yeah. What, what is it? Uh, mine is uh, 130 something. It's around that oh my range. Goodness. Was that a lot? I- yeah. I guess not. I don't know. You no, guys sound like you're 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 all up there. I I counted mine honestly in our like f- live. <laughs> what what is it? Fourteen. That's it. That's it. Oh my god, you're an angel. But you got to realize when women, uh, you know, tell you their body count, you got to triple it because they're not counting Tyrone. 
<laughs> They're not counting A lot Chad. of times with, that it, it doesn't count, count. No, I count them all. That's why I write them down. And I write their names yeah. down. So that if I they remember. have a husband, it doesn't count. If they have a wife, it doesn't count. Yeah, if they have a, if they have a wife. Have you ever hooked up with a guy who's married? No. <laughs> I have never hooked up with a woman who's married. What? Have you have you done that, Matt? Married? Yeah, married. Oh, all the time. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's very frequent. I'm actually wildly surprised why they like me. It's weird. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I did meet one of the girls you hooked up with who is literally married. And it's just weird. Like, I don't just that have is, a vibe. That is, I don't know. Um, that's different for sure. It just happens. I guess. Jess, what do you think the reason is? I think they get bored of the same thing over and over again. If there's nothing changing and there's no, like, I don't know. Have you ever cheated on a boyfriend? No, I have not. Why not? Just because I I don't see the appeal. Not yet. If not I yet. am with someone, then I'm with them. I think you're lying. I'm not. I think everyone cheats at some point in their life, so it just probably hasn't happened yet. Mm, I don't know if I <laughs> buy that theory, but uh, <laughs> each their own, I guess. <laughs> You know, half the time Justin's trolling, right? <laughs> I think she knows that right now. I'm trolling 90% of the time. It's like 90% of the time, like his questions are just to provoke you, oh, just to make, yeah. create a reaction. It's actually a really good game, game uh, tactic. Nice. Yeah. I have a question for you, Jess. As a woman, do you care about a guy's body count? Like, do you care about how many girls he's been with? Ooh, that's, that's yeah. interesting. For me, personally, I don't, I don't care how many you have, but like, once you meet me, it's gonna start going down. Ooh, all right. Once he meets you, it's gotta make magic happen. Yeah. So, what? What if you meet a guy and he's like actually a virgin? Like he's celibate. He's a virgin. He's never been with a girl. I've done it. I like you it. take girls. You take guys virginies. Mm -hmm, it was nice. It was cool. It was good. You enjoyed it. You pop his cherry. It was fun. What if you meet a guy and he's he's been with like over a thousand women? Would that be kind of gross, or would that be like okay? I don't know. I mean, I'm not one to judge. That's awesome. I love that. Am I to judge? Man, don't you think it's so cool? How like I find a lot of girls don't care if a guy's been with a lot of girls. Hundred percent compared to how we care about. Oh it. yeah, you get you yeah ridiculous. Like do, someone will just have do you a feel three hundred dollar three hundred dollar three hundred body count, but then be like, I want my girl to be a virgin. Well, I don't want my girl to be a virgin, but I definitely like her body count to be less than 14. No, I'm, just I'm just joking. I'm just teasing. No, so but uh, no, straight up, like, I don't know. I don't know if I could date a girl who has too high. Of a, definitely wouldn't date a girl who has over 100 body count. Probably wouldn't date a girl who has over 50. Um, and I would try to keep it like under 20. Yeah. I remember one time when I was like in college. How is that ratio any... I don't know. It, it, I feel like we perceive it differently. Like when I was in college, I met a girl that had 90 and she was like 17, 18. And in my head, it's like, what the fuck? I don't want to touch her. How do you know that so many weird. people? I mean, touch yeah. Because she's been in different people. I mean, no judgment. We became friends, like really good friends. But it's just that I feel like my instincts just like didn't want to hmm. kind of like see her that way. I don't know. Do you think it's a double standard though? I think so. Well, hundred percent. It's a double exactly standard. It is. That's exactly what it is. I... Okay. I mean, I'm not going to disagree. It's a double standard, but I believe that that instinct comes from nature because it's like, if a guy's hooking a lot of girls, he's a fucking man for a man to be able to hook up a lot of women. He needs to be well-dressed, charismatic, confident, well put together, probably have a good career, good job. Maybe have a nice car, mm -hmm. have a cool lifestyle. What I feel like he needs all those things. He needs to, at the very least, he needs to have confidence, personality, humor. He needs to be able to like make 300 different girls, you know, into him or attracted to him, right? For a girl to hook up, so. for a girl to hook up with a hundred guys, she doesn't have to do anything. She literally just has to show up and guys are usually just uh, DTF. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's why it's perceived differently. So guys, guys uh, have to do a lot of work in order to get laid. In order to, to attract a mate. Yeah. Really? I think sometimes girls are just horny. I'm not going to disagree, but I find the girls who are just horny, who are just trying to hook up, they're only hooking up with those guys who have a high body count. Because high, high body count, I feel like, associated to having a lot of experience and 
And if you have, a, if you're a guy and you have a lot of experience, that translates to that guy being more confident. I agree. I just asked. Justin needs water. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll take a short guys, break. <laughs> while you guys were talking about um, body count, I just texted this guy I'm talking to. What's yeah. your body count? <laughs> you just asked him. I just asked. Interesting. Over text. Yeah. It's a guy that she's involved with. She asked. Oh, are you, uh, you the guy you're saying? No. I just. Would you care? Talk to people. Like, let, let's say if he has a high body count, would you care? No. Yeah. Most girls don't care. About it. That's good. Yeah. Interesting. I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Do you think guys judge you if you had a high body count? Yeah. Do you think that's why girls lie about their body count? And that's why anyone lies ever. Matt, I think we just solved one of the mysteries in the universe. We just figured out why women lie about their body count. You just figured out why people lie because they're worried about. Yeah, it, it's uh, human nature. Like, you don't you you have a fear everyone has a fear of losing love and affection from other people if it if it means like you know people are going to judge you that means yeah. yeah that makes sense yeah it's interesting i don't think that it's even necessary to lie i think you should be honest but dude it makes sense that like Imagine this. Imagine you meet a beautiful girl. You're really into her. You go on a date with her. You hit it off. You know, everything's perfect. You know, you're seeing each other. And then, like, you're dating for, like, a month. And you find out she's been with, like, 157 dudes. And, like, five of them are Oof. guys you know. But, like, a couple of them just so happen to be, like, some dude you used to work with back in high school or some yeah. shit. Uh, she she also hooked up with, like, one of your, like, coworkers or some shit. Uh, fucking t- turns out she used to date your cousin. And then she hooked up with a couple of your buddies. I feel like at this point, um, when we meet a girl like that who hooked, who's hooked up with everyone, like, we actually don't care. We we actually, I don't know. Like, for me, I actually like her more. Because, <laughs> like, if my friends like her. You know what I mean? That's so funny. Like, I wouldn't enter a monogamous relationship but i would probably smash i'd probably smash <laughs> yeah. yeah makes sense i don't know i'm just I very open it. like that like i'm not I, i'm not very judgy if a girl has a high body count i think most people are judgy but like oh no i definitely smash I, yeah, yeah. I, I, when it comes to like I'm, not, I'm talking about dating i'm not talking about hugging the girls if we're talking about hugging yeah. girls i literally don't give a flying <clears throat> fuck you yeah. know what i mean and in her head's probably, oh my God, like she has a high body count. It's probably easier. <laughs> yeah, 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 in my head, it's like, oh great, less effort. You know, you know what's crazy though? I find girls with high body counts aren't necessarily easier, like quote unquote easier to hook up with. Less I mean, effort. It's less it, It's effort. less time. In less my time, opinion. yeah. It's less time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jess is looking at us like, what the fuck, <laughs> fuck boys? This is called the Wingman Podcast, guys. Just you know, so this is a podcast where right now we're wingmanning anybody's watching. Anybody's watching. It's just like we're just getting the raw truths of fucking reality. Yeah. This, these are the type of conversations we have late at night after we go out. That's true. You know what I mean, it's true. It's pretty sick. Yeah. I love it. We have some pretty intriguing, ridiculous conversations. Yeah. Yo, tell us a story. You said you you had a story for us. Story. You said you almost got got scammed or something like that. I didn't almost get scammed. I did get scammed. Why? How? It was uh, looking back. I'm such a an idiot, but um, I don't know. I just I thought I was receiving money, but then I ended up giving away my own money. Wait, what? Did you fall into those Instagram like hacks? Like they're, they're the hacked accounts? Not a hacked account. No, it, it was just someone I met online and. He was supposed to pay me for something. Was it for feet pics? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say they were for feet pics because that's basically. So yeah. it wasn't feet pics. It was nudes. It wasn't nudes. Titty pictures. None of booty that. Booty pictures. No. Was it something like weird? Was it like poop no, or something like that? it was just that? like conversation. He was paying you for a conversation? Yeah. Wait, why what? did you end up paying? How, how did that come about? I'm just, I'm so, you know what? No, I'm not going to say I'm so dumb. Let's make this me raising awareness because there are some people like me who are just very trusting. He said he, well, he sent me a check for $2,000 
And he was like, okay, yeah, here you go. And can you transfer me 1500 to, no, can you transfer it to my aunt? Because she needs it for, he said for diabetes and mm-hmm. for Christmas gifts. And I don't know why in my head I was just like, oh, okay. I yeah, mean, it's your a lot of people money. fall for that. I, so, I just thought he he gave me the money. So, so you, like, okay, you deposited the check, right? I deposited the check. And you realize there's a five day I know, hold. I know. And I worked for a bank, which is why I'm very upset yeah. with myself for getting caught into this. But So then yeah. you sent the $1,500 to his aunt. The check bounced. You lost $1,500. Yeah. Wait, why would you do that? Especially that you work for the bank. Yeah. It was just it was just a silly mistake on my part. Uh, <laughs> no, that happened exactly to me, but I knew it right away. Really? Was it with that Alex dude? No, no, no. <clears throat> so basically, I uh, have I run a photography business and I received an offer for a photo shoot. He's like, "Okay, you're going to get paid uh, $1,000 for the day. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is show up, do the photo shoot." Um so I think he sent me an electronic check. Yeah, that was it. I got the electronic check as well. Electronic check, and they asked me to deposit it. It's fraudulent. Um, it was like for fifteen hundred or something, and they're like, "Oh, we gotta, y- you gotta be in charge of paying the model," and we picked a model for you. This is his email, so send him five hundred dollars. But I'm like, "Fuck, I'm not, I'm not gonna send him five hundred dollars." Like, can you guys do that? Like, I'm like arguing with this person, right? First of all, like the way they did it was so sketchy. They're like, everything was done through email. First of all, before I start working with someone, I need to drill them with questions like, hey, like, why should I work with you? Right. Like this, it seemed way too easy. So when I'm like, hey, can can you get me on the phone with someone, who, the director of the photo shoot or something? And they're like, no, we'd rather like email. And then I keep drilling them. I'm not going to do that unless I get on the phone with someone. It's sketchy as well. Yeah. And so they eventually gave me a, a phone number to call. So I called the number. It literally sounded like a call center. It was like really loud. Oh my God. And the lady was so like, the lady had like a really thick accent. Those are definitely the people who call you and are just like, oh, you just want a trip yeah. to whatever. And then. Yeah. It sounded like one your, of those like, people. Social security number or something. And I'm like, I'm like drilling the lady uh, questions. Like what's a photo shoot for? Like what's the clothing brand? Like, <laughs> and like sh- she couldn't even answer any of those questions. She was like, oh, like I'm just doing it for someone. So I realized it was like everything was fishy. Then I took the check that they sent me and uh, I gave it to my bank. And they- Did the, so the money didn't even go on your account. No. Dude, that's so fucked up. Yeah. It just didn't go through. I knew it was catchy. Good for you. Yeah. So in other words, you sent feet pics to a guy <laughs> and then lost money doing so. You, know what? you got double. How, how much did you lose? Like 500? 1500? 1500. Oh my God. Shh. Oh my God. Shit happens. Did you That's try fine. calling your bank and trying fixing it and shit? Like it didn't work? Did You didn't get your money back? The bank's probably like shaking their heads like, what the fuck? Yeah. Dude, like, <laughs> how does that fucking happen? Like, I, I just don't get how the bank's don't protect you. Like, yeah. there's where's the consumer protection there? These these cameras are probably making so much off these people, oh, yeah. especially if they're like old people that like have yeah. no idea. But the, like, the crazy part is that the money works. has to go when to I somewhere. Was, when I was working as <laughs> as a teller, because mm-hmm. dumb as it is, I I did work as a TD teller. Um, there were old people who would come in with romance schemes all the time. Like, I mm-hmm. received a phone call from someone who said that my my grandson got into a car accident and they needed my credit card information to like Mm -hmm. um, call a tow truck and then damages and all that stuff. So I'm like, and they make it so believable. This is an old person. Of course they'll hear like their godsons in trouble, like, or whatever. Um, I'll send money. Like they're preying on people who are just empathetic and and I don't know. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fucked up. I have actually read a lot about these scammers and shit and like, they have no soul. No, people are evil. Some hundred percent. Some people some are make evil. a lot of money yeah. off of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I play a lot of video games, right? I met this one dude on Call of Duty, and and he was like blatantly honest. I guess like he's like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "Yo, I just made like my mom just made like or my family just made like a hundred k in the last month," and he's doing one of those like credit card scams where like, what? yeah, um, I don't know. He, he didn't explain exactly how to do it, but he's like, yo, like my family's been doing this for years That's and we insane. haven't been caught. Oh 
my goodness. I feel like eventually it catches up to you, though. Yeah. I mean, definitely. You know what's fucked Some up, people though? Are successfully it's like, doing how it. does the bank not trace <sighs> it? This is why I like Bitcoin. This is why I'm a huge advocate for Bitcoin because this doesn't happen with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of scams with Bitcoin and shit too, but it's like, yeah. the thing is like, if your money gets stolen from your bank account, it's like, it's kind of fucking a you problem. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it's like, the bank should, they should fucking trace it. And I just don't understand how they can't reverse it. Like, it's all centralized. It doesn't make any I sense. Think they can, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes they just don't want to. It was like, so fucked. The bank has a lot of power. Yeah. Super fucked. Did you go to the police, by the way, about that guy you sent money to? I was supposed to file a police report. Yeah, if you don't file a police but report, nothing told, happens. Yeah, I know. They told but me. But they so probably well. get that so much that it's just going to get pushed until yeah. like way yeah. later. They said uh, they would call me back within 10 days. And I'm like, that's so long. Wait, the police or said they that? Said, yeah. Or they said um, I could file a report online. Yeah. And if it's just coming from an email, it's just really so hard annoying. to trace. It's really hard to yeah. trace. But I have their phone number and everything, like how we... Yeah, was it like a Toronto stuff. number? Yeah, 647. Oh, you probably could have fucking... Do you, like, do you know who the person was? No, we just met like, online. Honestly, I worked at a... Uh, you keep using... <laughs> yeah, yo, I worked, I worked at a... <coughs> one of those like mobile like places where they sell like data and shit. You can get prepaid cards with like literally <coughs> fake names. I can get a get a prepaid card register under Mickey Mouse. That's crazy. Yeah, I made a joke about it one time. Dude, <laughs> I like, can, you, dude, yeah. you can download software. And it's prepaid. You can literally download texting software. Do yeah. the same shit. Craziness. Yeah. Fucking insane. Jess, I have another question for you. Why do you? Why do you think girls go to the club? <laughs> I don't know to turn up and have fun. So you think girls go to the club to turn up and to have fun? Yeah. Why? Why, why do? So why do? Why do guys go to the club? Why? Why do you? Why do you think guys go to the club? The For the same reason. Um, no, always the same. Fuck. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think there's one reason. That guys, guys go to the club. ever go to the club because girls go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate, actually. I, I just I love like women's opinions and things, <laughs> and they're like it's just like so like. Not based in reality sometimes. Uh, not what? pointing you out. I, I'm not pointing you out at all. I'm just like saying in general. Because like, as a woman, you're be thinking, I'm going to the club because I want to dance, want to hang, hang on my friends, have some drinks, right? And guys are like, I want to go to the club because I want pussy. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking hilarious. It's actually hilarious. Why? Why is that? How come fun isn't as big of a factor to us than girls? Survival and replication. Yeah. Think if you actually think about it. How many uh, of your actions every day are your actual conscious actions and thoughts? And how much of it is like your subconscious brain and your biology in control? So you wake up and like the first thought's like, I'm hungry. And you have a boner because you just woke up and you have morning wood and you're like, I'm horny. Then you're like, wait, gotta go to the bathroom. Gotta take a shit. And then you're like, oh, I'm hungry again. And then you eat food and then you're like, oh, I'm <laughs> sleepy. Don't take another nap. It's like most of people's behavior is their subconscious brain and their biology controlling them. Mm -hmm. And it's also a difference between the temperament of women and men. I feel like men were very mission focused. Like we always want to accomplish things. Like we go somewhere to get something, you know, we foragers. Yeah. We, we want outcomes. Like we want to accomplish exactly. outcomes. And for girls, I feel like it's about how they feel in every moment. It's true. Like the, they just want to feel emotions and like more be nurturing. free and like more nurturing. Have fun. Well, I that's why when girls at the club, like if you meet a cute guy who's making you feel good vibes, you're like, "Fuck, I'm going home with this guy," right? Yeah. But they're not like set on a mission to go get dick every night. Yeah, yeah. almost rarely. I think so. Yeah, everything you were saying sounded like very much from like an evolutionary standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like the male being the hunter, gatherer, mm -hmm. forager, whatever, provider. And then the woman being more nurturing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You're really yeah, smart. I go to the club to, to, dance, to yeah. dance, to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Why do you think girls play hard to get? Because mm, they are. They should be. They treat themselves with respect so someone else can. What do you mean? I think for me, hard to get, I guess, 
like I just have a higher standard. And if that's hard for you to get, then you have to like fix up. <laughs> I get it. No, get I respect it. that. I respect a lot. Some girls don't have standards and it's actually a turn off. <laughs> Do you think most guys are easy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a common fact. That is a pretty fact. Most most guys are pretty. It easy. is survival and implication, though, right? Because think yeah. about this, right? If a woman gets pregnant, reproduction, she is stuck with your fucking weird baby. Like, imagine this, right? Imagine you're, you're like some like baby. some beta fucking weird loser. Imagine you're just some scrubby little fucking loser, and you meet a hot girl, and she gets pregnant with your baby by accident. Mm-hmm. Now she's gonna be pregnant. Stuck with you. That's nine months with your alien baby growing inside her, and that's nine months of an opportunity cost that she could be out meeting. Opportunity cost. A great dude, uh, mm-hmm. a guy who's high status, killed in life, and now she's gonna produce your beta offspring. So some like cool fucking mm-hmm. alpha Chad. It's yeah. it's less of an investment for us yeah. to be with someone. It it's all circling back to like biology yeah, Dude, it's double crazy. standard evolution i think everything circles back to evolution and biology to mm-hmm. be honest i mean all of these well, conversations do, nothing yeah nothing is like bad or good though i think women have traits that complement men's traits in a relationship and men's traits complement women's traits it's we kind of just like work together you know as a team as a group some men have weaknesses and strengths and women have strengths and weaknesses as well and i think we're meant to kind of work together yeah yeah but I think we work best in partners. That's why. Yeah. So it's not that like one gender is better than the other. No. I think we all have value. I don't think that was ever a question. Yeah. It's we all have equal value. value. We just have, we play different roles. Yeah. I agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. I, I don't think men and women are equal. Do you think men and women are equal? E- equal value. You're just trying to stir up a conversation. I'm not trying to stir up a conversation. E- I genuinely, this is my <laughs> genuine belief. I don't think we're equal. Uh, men or women are fucking completely fucking different. Yeah. yeah, I think I think women actually have more value. I think women have way more value. Way more. Value. I think women in society you. have I think, more power. I think than men. men are Straight disposable. Up. Oh, hundred thousand. Like I feel like if I die tomorrow, <laughs> I mean we we need sperm to fertilize. Exactly. Eggs, but other than that, you serve not much purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it real. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. I feel personally offended. No. Nah. I'm not offended. I kind of accept it. All right, you Jess, I'll, I'll fertilize your ex for you. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. But uh, no, so like, that's the thing though. I feel like men literally are disposable. <laughs> and I genuinely feel like in society, oh gosh, like women have so much more societal power when it comes to so, like social conditioning essentially uh-huh. like think about this right if dude if, if you go, if your girlfriend hit you or like punched you or some shit and you, you tell people they're gonna be like oh boohoo oh your, your girlfriend fucking you know man up right but dude if, if if for whatever reason a girl's like oh my god my boyfriend hit me right people are gonna flip their shit they're gonna flip their fucking shit <laughs> guess what do you think I just lost these for a second there. That was, uh, what, what do you think? If if you were to hit a guy, yeah, he's not gonna like report you to the police. But if your boyfriend hit you, probably go to the cops. He gets criminal charges. I mean, everyone. If he hurt me, if he hit me to like cr- intentionally cause me damage, like then yeah. But if it's just like oh, you're so dumb, and it's like a, I don't know, like I've I've hit my boyfriend before, but not like to hurt him, like. Oh, okay. All right. You're so annoying. Like, go away. Like, if he's not bothering me and he just like, you know. I get what you're saying. I understand. But um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like women have too much power in society these days. Whatever. Oh, that's what I was going to pull up. I tweeted it earlier today because this guy, that, uh, I went to Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. And so like I was meeting people. And this guy hit me up and we hung out. He was literally like, he was trying to fuck me and I wasn't down. But just the other day, <laughs> he posted that he got engaged. He's like, engaged to my love. And I'm like, get out of here. Like, men, men deserve nothing. Like, how are you going to try to fuck sexist. me and then get That's engaged very the next the I next see day. that from girls all the time. What do you mean? How's I fucked sexist? a girl back in, uh, <laughs> actually, it actually was Valentine's Day, 2018. It's okay. It's safe to be sexist. 2018, Valentine's Day, okay? 
hooked up with a girl. A month later, I see she's engaged on Instagram. She's married now, probably. Oh my god! Dude, we see it so much. I'm not even like. It doesn't even phase. Really? It doesn't phase me. Yeah, it's like. That's I joke around. Can I, I want to see your couple days. photos. <laughs> I bet they're cute. <laughs> so when you're hanging out with a girl and you don't even know that she has a boyfriend, she's like, "I bet you have a boyfriend. Show me your pictures. It's cute." Yeah, there's. It's always as sketchy when when you follow them and and it's like a private like Instagram, mm. and they don't accept her for like a week. What What are you showing me right now? Nothing. Like engagement photos of your the guy you're talking to. No. <laughs> Who's that? She, she's showing me a video. You know, I've, I've met David Obrick. I met his like, really? whole crew when I was in LA, yeah. That's like, VidCon cool. 2019. Justin, Do you Justin. think men and women can be just friends? Yeah. <sighs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know if I could ever be friends with a woman, honestly. No, I don't I think can't. women, you know what? They make friends. great friends. We're not friends. We're not friends with you. I'm trying to smash. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All right, then. No, but like, <laughs> look, I, I'm talking about real long term friendship. I've been friends with Matt for eight fucking years. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've had guy friends for years. I'd say right now, the longest female friend I have is about a year. It's probably Natalie. Yeah. Right? Because after a certain amount of time, it's like either you end up like hooking up or dating them and then having like some like breakup and fallout from that. Or. Have you hooked up with Natalie? Yeah. 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 No, me me and Natalie. Well, Natalie was my old roommate and then we just like kind of started hooking up because of COVID lockdowns and shit. And, uh, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, we both liked each other at, like, different times. But, like, I kind of was like, you know what? We should just be friends. And she kind of wanted to date me. Uh, but I think at some point she's like, you know what? I agree. Like, we're, we, we're really grateful for our, own, our friendship. And I don't want to fuck that up. I value her friendship a lot. Because she's, like, one of my only real female friends I have. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, dude. I feel it's like... We've hooked up and been intimate with each other many, many, many times. So it's like, are you even mm -hmm. friends at that point? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I think so. What do you mean? You but you just said she's your friend. We are. It's like, we've also smashed. Like, do you think women and men can be just friends? Like, I mean, they've smashed before, but now they're friends. You're doing it. I think that's the only way it's possible. I think it's the only way it's feasible to be friends with a female. If you're a guy is after you had sex with them. That's yeah. my opinion. I 100%. Because you get the tension. Like, you get rid of the tension. 100%. Uh, In fact, I refuse to be friends with a woman I unless she fucks of, me. I have a lot of guy friends. <laughs> okay, like, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, For, for all the guys that you, you call friends right now, they haven't, like, looked at them that way. Yeah. In your opinion, do you think if you gave them a chance to, like, hook up with you, would they jump right into it? Jump. jump in the opportunity to hook up with you. Not jump, I don't think. If you called any one of I'm your guy friends <laughs> right yeah, now, yeah. you're like, if hey, you, yeah. I'm no, horny. just hypothetically, if you just yeah. like call them, hey, like, can you come over? I'm like really horny. Ooh, do you think they no. do it? No. Some of them would just be like, well, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, I don't think, think so. I think it's delusional. I think probably most, most of them would. I think most of them would. I don't think too. most women realize that the guys they friend zone wants to fuck them or date them. I don't think so. I have too many guy friends for that to be true. Hmm. People are going to be watching this and make this girl so incorrect. <laughs> so <laughs> incorrect. You know what's crazy? I remember when I was in like we, 10th we grade. We just have a lot, a lot of experience. Bro, when I was like 15 years old, every single fucking girl I was friends with or who's nice to me, I was like go home and jerk off to their Facebook pictures. I oh swear to God. Goodness. Yeah. yeah, I'm just be fucking real with you guys. Like all these girls I was friends with, I had crushes on. 100%. 100%. Um, My best friend in elementary school. You were in love with her? I was. But I was like best friends with her. Like hoping that one day she'd like, she'd like, uh, like see me in that way, which you is kind of like. You shot. Yeah. You, but you gotta shoot your shot, Guess bro. what? Like a couple years later, I did. Oh, wait. <laughs> and I'm oh, smashing. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. Currently? Well, not now. It's, it's oh. like a couple years ago, but. Smash. Oh, a couple, a couple years ago. You smashed. Yeah. It, it not a couple like, years later. Honestly. You're, you're in elementary school. I was like kind of, <laughs> hey, this might sound petty, but I was kind of like angry at her for like friend zoning me. That's the reason why I kind of like, <laughs> like I wanted to like just go for it. And kind of just to like prove myself that, okay, cool. Like I'm, I'm like a better like person now, you know, like I deserve kind of like girls attention at this point. And then I just, I don't know. Dude, it, I have a very similar story. I just felt really good in that I, moment. That's insane. 
Like it, it makes it makes sense because it's like I finally fucked your high school crush or whatever. Yeah. Right. No, that's how I felt. And then to to make myself even better, it's just like I just like didn't call her after. <laughs> what the fuck? It's so like, kind of uh, fucked up. Kinda, it's kind of fucked up. It's fucked yeah. up. Yeah. I'm, At least you can admit it to yourself. You're like, no, but she didn't call me back either. Oh well, fair <laughs> so enough. Like, fair actually, enough. she might have. I just, I don't know. I was, I, I went through a phase of like wanting to prove myself, and it was really toxic. And I was really young too. I was like mm. maybe like 19, 20. I feel that yeah. wanting to prove yourself. I feel like sometimes I'll just create a little checkbox in my head for a task mm-hmm. that I want to complete. And then if I can't take it off, I'll be like a little annoyed. Yeah. I'm very competitive. So if I say like, like if we're at a bar or something and it's really busy and I have my eyes set on one person, then I will make it my mission. That's nuts. All right. Get there. Yeah. So if you're at the bar and you see a cute guy and you're like, that's your mission. How do you, how do you take him home? You want to take this guy home? How, how, what's your game plan? Let's hear it. I just, I don't know. I try to like casually make myself seen. Um, whether that be like walking by to go to the washroom or like getting a drink, not too far away. See like, I guess out of sight, out of mind is very prevalent there. I so like as long as you're within his like visual sight, visual field, then I don't know. I just look at him. It's a very feminine way a lot to approach eyes. a guy because it's like, it's not female nature to be like, oh, I like that guy. I'm going to go approach him and introduce myself. It's like, I'm just going to like flirt in his general vicinity and hope he talks to me. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, hang that's, that's a very out around him I and hope he for, gets me. Yeah, I do that. But if I see that he's not, then, then I will, I will go and approach him. Like, will you physically approach him and be like, Hey, what's up? Yeah. I, d- I actually did that for the first time a few weeks ago. Um, I was at work and I was working at the airport at the time. And there was this guy who would come in. He would come in weekly because mm-hmm. he travels as a healthcare consultant. I ended up talking him for talking to him for a while, so I know that that's what he did for work. But he came the next week, and I'm like, okay, the first time I didn't talk to him, I didn't say anything. I'm going to say something this time. So he gets his test done, and then he's catching the train to head back to like a different terminal or whatever. So I go up to him, and I'm like, hey, so. <laughs> I, well, I didn't say it like that, but whatever. I said, hey, so I thought you were really cute and I just wanted to say hi. Like, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have Instagram or whatever? He's like, yeah. Um, Interesting. <laughs> he's like, yeah, uh, you too, but I I have a girlfriend. And I'm like, what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I, what I didn't beta. Really know what to do. So I was like, okay. Thanks. Like, have I mean, a good props day. for you for making that. Yeah, move. I was gonna say, good, good, good on job. you for making that move. Not a lot of girls can do that. This dude's dumb. He should cheat. Why would he tell you as a girlfriend? What? Why would he I tell agree. you as a girlfriend? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, yo, I don't know. The he trick did seemed like he was really, he was being really sweet and like kind of flirting with me too. Which oh, is yeah? Why it felt like a little. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Very high integrity guy. So that's the thing. Because I won't approach him unless I feel like there was a bit of. Oh, a, I got it. Yo, you, you know? know what I realized lately? I've, or not lately, but I've realized in a while, girls are really good at picking up guys, like instinctively. Like a lot of my game, I actually learned from women because they that. approach kind of like the opposite sex very indirectly. Yeah. Like I've, I've, I've flirting around. Yeah. Um, like even that, like I kind of like do, do it very similar to the way you do it. I kind of just like roam in the vicinity and I would just like suddenly like, I would like, a lot I, of people do that yeah, in the I, club. I, I try to like, like make it as you know? indirect as possible, so it's not it. So my goal is ever if I ever go for like someone I like, is to make it seem like it just happened. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that works the best for me. If I like suddenly just randomly bump into someone, it's be like, oh, sorry, that was really rude. Like, sorry, I feel bad. Like, what's her name? So you're walking mm-hmm. in the club, and I like bump bump into you see her, a cute like, girl. You just smack right in her. <laughs> like, oh my bad, so- spill a drink on her. Oh shit, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Have you tried that? You've never tried that. I actually don't think I've ever fucking tried that, dude. Yeah. Oh, well, you like when, going in just be like, bro, hi. I, I just walk right fucking in and I'm like, yeah, what's you up? Like You're hot as fuck. I like you. Nice I don't know. You. you should definitely try the indirect way because like, I feel like after hooking up with them, girls are going to be like, uh, oh my God. Like, like they want something. I think for me anyways, like the whole point yeah. of like that checking a tick, uh, a check box for me yeah. was just like, I set my eyes on something. And I accomplish that goal 
And for me, it's like, yeah, girls are like that. Like they, you, you do it Random very applause. indirectly. Like you, you like see Random in your head, I'm going to do this. I'm going to like walk beside him and like, I'm going to tap him in the shoulder and like ask. I do that a lot in like restaurants. Like if I see a cute girl at a restaurant, I'm, I'm going to like pretend I'm in line, even though I'm not getting food. Yeah, I know you're saying. I mean, I'd be like, oh, cool. What's the best food in here? Oh my God. I actually really like your shirt. Oh, what's your name? You know what I mean? That that's kind of like how I approach it. I feel and, like it's a, it's a very feminine way to handle things. Cause like as a man, you want to be at the cause and women like being at the effect of I don't a man. agree, but because my mindset's still masculine. Like I want to do it in a way that puts the least amount of pressure on the girl compared to like going up straight and be like, hey, you're really cute. I want to meet you. I do think the way you're doing it though, because I've picked up girls with you for like yeah. fucking eight years. Like the way you are doing it is completely different than the way she's describing it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she's kind of like walking up to girls and like waiting for them to like talk to her you're kind of yeah. wa- you're you're still I, i'm still entire, leading the interaction yeah, yeah you're still leading the entire technically the way you approach girls it's saying that what's your what's your most common like what like your outfit yeah that's like my favorite pickup line is telling yeah. girls i like their outfit but that's still like fashion that still feels very like indirect you know what i mean you're it doesn't show that you're too like that, committed. That no, but I think I would like receiving to receive a compliment yeah. like that. Like I really but, like my style, and I put exactly. Like, time but and like effort into that me. line doesn't say that that guy's into you. Yeah, but you that'll I mean? strike up a conversation, and yeah. maybe if we so start do to it. talk, yeah, then so, I'm pretty sure that's like literally that's literally how I approached you at that bar mm, two weeks ago. That is, I walked up to I you, told that. you like your outfit, and I'm like, oh, nice to meet you, just Mark. That's literally how I fucking met this girl. Just, wow. just so yeah, you fucking know. Tell, tell us her about the spa and you were seeing cute girls. You didn't know what to say because you're all wearing the same oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> so I, I, I was at the uh, I was at the spa yesterday, right? You're wearing the pants from the spa. And, and so like everyone wears like the spa outfit. And, and Matt FaceTimes me last night. And I'm like, dude, there's so many cute girls here. I just don't know what to say because we're all wearing the same fucking outfit. We're, we're all wearing the spa attire. And like my only pickup line is telling girls, I like your style or I like your fashion or I like your outfit. It, right, and so, that's like my only fucking pickup line I use, and so I was like, "Fuck!" So I call that. I'm like, "I don't know what to say." All the girls are wearing the same thing as me. <laughs> I'm like, "You should just do it just for fun." <laughs> I like your outfit. That would have been funny though if I walked up to girls and I'm like, "Oh, I like your outfit." Oh my god, it's so fancy. Where do you get it? <laughs> oh my god, uh, trippy. No, but but when it comes to the indirect approach, I feel like when I do it and I hook up with a girl. Uh, at the end, at the end, I, I'm gonna ask them like, oh, well, why did you go home with me? And like, what did you like about the way I talked oh, to you? Really? They're like, you get reviews. Yeah, I, I always get reviews. Oh. They, they, they say that. Oh, it just, it felt like it just happened. You know, it felt like it, it flowed naturally. That's Some good. Yeah, they don't, feedback. they don't even remember what I said in the beginning. In fact, I don't even remember what I said. Yeah, you know, when I hook up with girls, I get them to fill out a survey, a survey on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they, they, I get them to sign a survey and a like non-disclosure agreement and I'll not tell anybody signature yeah I love signing NDAs yeah. we should get her to sign an NDA for this just in case 100% Don't sign anything. <laughs> no it's, it's a good time anyways do you prefer fingering or oral oh <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I guess that's where we're going um, I don't I don't know Maybe I don't feel comfortable answering. All right, it's fine. I was just joking. I was literally joking. <laughs> like, Matt, Matt's I, like, what I are prefer, we talking about? I prefer oral. What do you prefer? I prefer fingers in my ass. I'm just, I'm just totally joking. I prefer joking. oral in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, if you, either, if you choose between finger, a like girl's fingers up your ass, or, or a girl oral, eating your ass, eating your ass. I definitely, yeah, oral's definitely yeah, way better. Yeah, that's way better. Have you ever gone down on a guy's, like, butthole? No. Never? No. Shit. What kind of Latino are you? What do you mean? Are you Latina? I thought we were like something else. Dude, what every fucking Latina girl I've ever hooked up with, there's been tons, yeah. love eating ass. I dude, swear to God. Spanish girls love you. Yeah, dude. I, I cannot get Spanish girls. They love me so much. I feel like I'm not like speak Spanish. Spanish I'm like, hola, hermosa. Oh, yeah, estás? you do. <laughs> you do. Hola, Jess. Tu eres muy guapa. Guapa? Me encantas guapa. tu cam- camisa. Me encanta tu estilo. Someone asked, uh, do accessories matter when going out? Chains, yes. rings, earrings? 100%. So you think if you're going to hit always, the club, yes. you got to dress up? 100%. I will always wear my gold necklace and my earrings. Mm-hmm. Never come off. Just cause, like, what about when you meet a guy? Does it matter if he has accessories? A watch, chains, earrings, etc.? 
Uh, I like accessories. I think it shows that they put an effort into how they look. And I don't know. I really like rings. I find that to be really attractive. I like hands. So Mm -hmm. if you're dressing up your hands. Yeah. I feel like it communicates a lot if you're a guy that invests in your style because that it's like a reflection of your confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Like a guy who's not that confident won't be comfortable like dressing more outrageously, like Mm -hmm. like wearing like something that's that peacocks. You're expressing your personality. Yeah. I feel like the more confident we got, the more comfortable we are at dressing more expressively. True. Well, look at your hair. You're a Filipino guy with blonde hair. Yeah. Watch rings, sleeve tatted up. I'm yeah. a little Indian dude with fucking cartilage piercing, spacers, nose piercing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got a bunch of tattoos and shit too. And what's really cool about that as well is if you're an ethnic minority, mm-hmm. it breaks your stereotypes. So imagine you're like some Spanish fuck or like some like Mexican dude. Instead of being like, hey, what's up? My name's like Juan from fucking Mexico. Mm-hmm. Now you're just like... Now you're like fucking Juan, you know what I mean? Yeah. With the fucking iced out chain, the girls watch. love that. Girls love that because I don't know, it's something rebellious about that. Um, dressing differently, um, or you just look like their favorite rapper. What about tattoos? So, it doesn't have to be like <clears throat> dressing. I mean, dressing differently, more like just dressing like unique. The way you dress is a reflection of who you are. So if you're more creative and like outlandish, then maybe that's who that person is like. What do you think about tattoos? Do you like tattoos? I like tattoos. Do you think most girls like tattoos? I think so. Uh, but I know some girls who just don't like tattoos. At all. It's weird. I actually don't like when girls. Personally, I don't like when girls have tattoos. I love I have when tattoos. girls have tattoos. I love when girls have tattoos. How many tattoos do you have, Jess? I have. It's one piece, but it's three. Oh, it's horrible. Birds. Oh no, I saw that one. That was cool. Next question. Next. What question. What do you think about needy guys? What do you think? What do you think about guys who are like needy? Needy. Do you like guys who are needy and clingy? No. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't know. It just it seems like oh, why? Why are you doing so much? Don't you need time for yourself? I need time for myself. I very much like mm-hmm. doing things alone. And I don't know if you don't like doing that. I find that kind of weird because then you're too attached to me. Like, mm-hmm. what if something happens to me? What are you gonna do? You're gonna like die. Do you think guys being needy is a turnoff? Oh, some people like it, but I feel like being needy uh, usually ends up with being like very codependent. Mm-hmm. And I don't like the hassle of having someone's like burdened on me. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I actually love girls who are needy, especially if it's like a random hookup. She's mm-hmm. just needy for that one moment. It's like perfect. Unless I'm not, attra- like if I'm attracted to her. If I'm, if I'm not attracted to her, I don't like girls who are needy. But if I'm attracted to her, <laughs> then like, fuck yeah. Especially like, I actually like needy girlfriends. Is that weird? But those are usually like the worst relationships, I find. Yeah. Those, those relationships usually end up just being like fucking horrible. Mm. Like my girlfriend right now, she's super not needy. Mm. I don't like when girls are needy. Mm. I don't. It, it's like a turn off to me. I like my space. I like being alone. I like working on my stuff. And, you know, I've had... Girls call me like three times a day, and it's it's just like, like yo, he, he's mad. You, wait, you guys are mad that fucking a girl calls you three times a day, if, dude? If dude, I look that's at my way missed, too much. If I look at my that missed calls, bro, if you, if you see my missed calls from my roommate, no, just for my fucking male roommate, calls me like twelve times a fucking day. My main chick calls me like ten times a fucking day. I call you like more than that. Oh, no, you, <laughs> For like five times a day. Yeah, you call me a lot. Call me a lot dude. It's like Justin, stop fucking sleeping. It's like ten PM. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, haven't woken up yet. Good morning. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think like the average guy, if they're if they're needy, it is a turn off to women. Like if you're a guy out there and you're being fucking needy, just don't do it. Just fucking don't do it. Just stop. Stop. Yeah. Don't do it. There's it's a way good. to convey value and interest in a woman without being needy. Yeah. What if What if you feel needy and uh, you're a guy that want, wants to get a girl? Like, how do you solve that? The, that's the thing, though, right? You solve it through abundance. And it's like, how do you get abundance? So you stop being needy. So, so you kind of <laughs> just like, you're, you're stuck it's in like, this. Sure. I think uh, what stems from like, I don't know. Being needy or or needing that constant validation from your partner. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I don't know, maybe it's, you're not so content with just being yeah. alone. 
I, I think. And that or a lack of purpose if you're a guy. Yeah. If you're a guy that's lost in yeah. life and you don't know that what does, I you, guess, give you what you want to do with your life. Something to do. So your main purpose just becomes like trying to get a partner. I feel like neediness disappears if you're like working towards something. If a guy's just like so focused, if you meet a guy that's like so focused on like his business or like yeah. a project that he's working in. That's why. Yeah. And that's you hit him up and he's like, oh, I'm so busy this week. Like, I'll try to make time for you. You know what I mean? Then he's not needy in that situation. You know, because I, think, I think this is why girls love guys who are fucking lots of other girls. Even though like all girls are like, I hate fuck boys. I hate assholes. Like logically, you don't like it. Logically, you don't like guys who are fucking other girls. But emotionally, you're attracted. Like every girl yeah, is attracted to those guys. Yeah, because the guy that is fucking a lot of girls aren't needy. They're so fucking non needy. Non needy, yeah. The more girls I fuck, the less needy I feel. Let me ask you this. Have you ever hooked up with a fuck boy? No, but I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, let me introduce myself. What's up? <laughs> Justin Mark. <laughs> I actually have a girlfriend as well. But it's okay, because I cheat. Okay. <laughs> Teasing. No, he's, he's joking. Kidding. He doesn't cheat. No, I don't I don't cheat. And I don't have a girlfriend. Or do I? Do you? I don't know. I can't tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> nice. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Have you ever gone through a boyfriend's phone? No. Matt, have you ever gone through your girl, girl your girl's phone? Um, maybe once or twice. I, they, don't, I, I, I went don't feel through the need one to. girlfriend's you, phone, you and I found dick pics in it. I'm like, oh fuck, she's oh. been fucking another dude. And then she eventually admitted that she was fucking another guy. I was like, oh, well, shit. Is that weird? So. Honestly, if know. you do want to go, th- I'm going to actually give I, the best advice. I really advice. believe in the quote, um, you don't want to ask questions you don't want to know <laughs> the answer to. Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. With Honestly, that I'm, I'm, I just don't want to know. I I'd guess rather. ignorance is bliss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go through your girlfriend's phone, do it while she's sleeping. Like while she's sleeping. Why? Scan her face. Why do you feel the need to? That's so. Bad. I don't. They I don't need their feel eyes. the need they to. Need their eyes but like, open. dude, imagine you're like with a girl for like fucking two years. You have a suspicion that she might been fucking around, but you want to like potentially like take it serious. What she she can be fucking honest with you. It's like yeah, a trust test. Girls never fucking lie. Girls it, never lie. I guess it's trust us. Yeah, that's a good. Go idea. through her phone, and you don't need to look at a text message between guys. You need to look at the text message between her and her best friend. You go through your girl's phone and you look at the messages between her and her best friend. And you should only do this if you think she's cheating on you. That's really good advice. Yeah. Because she, she, she'll she delete the the conversation of the guy she's talking to, but she won't delete her best friend's conversation. Bingo. That's how, that's how Laura, my ex-girlfriend, found out. And I was like, oh, all, these, all these girls. Because I would message like, you know, literally message like you, Nick, like a bunch of my close friends. And she would like literally, that's, I learned this from her. Chat. <laughs> Honestly, she could just go on YouTube. <laughs> like hypothetically, any girlfriend I ever have, they they do that straight up. They do go on YouTube, but that's yeah. why I have like a three month delay with my videos. I have like no. a backlog with my content. So, so where they, did you learn that? I feel like you learned that from girls. What? Like looking at the best friends conversation. I feel yeah, like girls know. I, that I learned that from my ex girlfriend doing it to me. Yeah, a lot of joking. stuff that we learn, we, we just learn from girls. Yeah, literally. Like, oh, like so savage smart. dating strategies for girls are, they're conniving as fuck. Yeah. Women are like what? super conniving. They're what? super geniuses at social interactions mm-hmm. naturally. They're like the ultimate naturals you ever want. Yeah. Yeah, I learned that behavior from Laura, my ex-girlfriend. When she found, because she, I'm pretty sure she wanted to find out who I was fucking or like if I fucked this one girl, Selena. You remember Selena? Yeah. You remember Selena. <clears throat> I definitely uh, remember Selena. Yeah. yeah, and so she wanted to find out if uh, I met up with Selena again. And uh, I think she like went through my conversation with you or Nick or something. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking know, dude. It just happens. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, this is funny. I wasn't cheating. We were broken up. Me, me and Laura were actually broken up. She'd moved out of my place. But like, we were still seeing each other, and she just wanted to know if I was like, she just took one of my laptop while I was out of the room. It's pretty fucked up. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Her joke's on me. She was fucking some fucking Chad looking guy. She, she was hooking up with a dude who looked just like me, but he was white and taller. 
and more jacked. I swear to God. It was it was like a, a version of me that was, I sw- dude, this dude had, because I had long hair at the time, he had long hair, like he had the same facial structure. I'm like, God damn, dude, women are savage. Yeah, she, she has a type. She had a type. Mm-hmm. She had a type. I don't know, man. I think I think everyone cheats. They may ask my experience. Mm-hmm. I, I think, uh, you know, it's it's either um, a lot of people are just in fucking denial. I think I think the amount of cheating that happens is just insane, and like people are just delusional and in denial. Mm-hmm. Is that your sugar daddy? Are you no, your that's just my friend. It's your friend. Your friend, one of the it's guys your, you're friends on. Friend. Did you friends on him, or he friends on you? Do you smash? Yeah, I've definitely yeah. friends on girls. Have you friends on girls? What about bitch in the friend zone? Uh, no, I, fr- I friends with girls after I fuck them. Like after yeah. I hook up with them, I tell them yeah. we're just friends. <clears throat> if you, if I if don't find them attractive, them. I'll just friends on them. That's the only. If place. I hook up with a girl, if you don't, and she find wants to date me. If if friends? if they're cool and I don't find them attractive, like I, I'll friends on them. <laughs> if a girl wants to date me and I'm not into the idea of dating her, I friends with her. Uh. Usually, what happens after I hook up with a girl is I get really honest. Like, I, I'm pretty honest before I hook up with a girl, but after I hook up with a girl, I get, like, brutally honest. Good. Mm-hmm. Like, brutally honest. Like, straight up, just fucking, just everything's out there. I love that. Yeah, because it's, like, in my head, I guess subconsciously, I've already hooked up with her. I'm not trying to get anything from her. I, and, and at this point, it's, like, just be myself. Yeah. And it's, like, I'm, I'm usually myself before I even hook up with a girl, too. But it's, like, I feel like anytime you're subconscious trying to get something from a girl and that's not a good frame to come from. Like even when I hang out with a girl, I'm trying to smash whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking I'm like, I'm trying to get laid, but um, I know for a fact, like girls are like this too. After you hook up with the chick, you get a chance to see like what kind of chemistry you have, how the sex was. Mm-hmm. And so after you might as well just be honest. Yeah. After, af- you after um, you hook up, the walls are already down and I feel like it's okay to not be honest not too honest in the beginning because if you're too honest you kill the mystery and you overwhelm There's, her yeah you overwhelm you kill the mystery there's no more passion what is passion what is romance it's like if like girls trying to figure out who you are if you just give that right away to her then there's no there's nothing interesting about you so i believe in like not telling her everything right in the beginning but then after hooking up then you just you're, you can literally just like hey like put everything out there Fair play. Good point. Any questions at all? Just ask it. A thousand people on live and Justin gets married to tell your friends. Is that woman a porn star? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Jess, are you a porn star? No, I am not. Oh my she could goodness. be. Yo, the cameras are rolling, so I mean, no. we, 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 we can make you a porn star. I don't know if we can post on Instagram, When's though. the last time you banged Oh, we can all... Chick? We when's, last we, it. when's the last time you banged an Asian chick? It's <laughs> a great question. I feel it's got to be in the past couple months at least. Couple of months. Okay, so I don't know about banged. Oh, wait, are we gonna answer? But that uh, who knows? Advice for someone who has Why never had a girlfriend. Why should someone be coached by you? Ooh. Advice <laughs> for someone <laughs> who's who never had a girlfriend. Who's never had a girlfriend. Oh, I, okay. Um, That's a really good question. I like that. Uh, I would say work on right. yourself first. <laughs> it's such generic <laughs> advice. <laughs> my, advice is, so. my advice is no. don't get a girlfriend. <laughs> no. <laughs> Matt's advice is work on yourself, stay work on single. Yourself. <laughs> work on your passions. And I don't know, because I find those things attractive. I, I so think those are that's good advice. In something. Um, making sure you can have a life outside of your that other person. So here's the thing, though. If you've never had a fucking girlfriend, dude, if you've never, ever been in a relationship, it's probably because you're not socially developed and you're not aesthetically developed. So you haven't figured out how to look smacks and optimize your your fashion, your grooming, mm. the way society perceives you. And you also don't have the soul skills, confidence, and personality development to allow you to move over that relationship. And so advice for someone who doesn't have a girlfriend is like develop skills with women first because if you improve your skills with women in general because women dating soul skills it's a skill set if you can improve that you're automatically going to become attractive to women and then you can kind of just pick a woman who already yeah. likes you then you can be choose a from a from a position of power i agree and, with that and trying out different uh different women as well kind of like trying out different cars and like test driving before 
if you never had a girlfriend and you want to have a girlfriend, stop seeking to have a girlfriend. There's this concept of Ooh, yes. you're only free to do anything once you've lost everything. Let go of your thought process of even trying to get in a relationship. Here's the beauty of it. It's like once you've been in a relationship, that relationship will shape you for whatever you do in the future. So like treat your first girlfriend as almost like a, um, I would say treat it as like uh, an opportunity to grow. Don't take it too seriously and just like take every day, day by day. Hello. This guy said, hey, you didn't answer my Asian trick question. Yeah. I actually am not sure the last time I banged an Asian girl. Who the fuck knows? Matt, when's the last time you banged an Asian girl? A um, couple years ago. A couple years ago? Yeah. <gasps> um, a long time. Yeah. Well, you've had a girlfriend for a couple years, so. Yeah. That makes sense. So, no, I, I usually don't like Asian girls. I feel like it's like. There's definitely a statistical incest. probability that I hooked up with an Asian girl in the last few months, but I'm not even sure because like, I don't even think about it. How do you overcome your high problem? That's a great question. So, so one of these guys asking us, oh, one of our viewers asking us, how do you overcome, you know, the if you're short or if you're not too tall when it comes to dating? Well, that's a great question. And I don't think it really even matters. The average female is five foot four, five foot five in like Western society, I believe. And in non-Western society, even shorter. And so it's like the average guy is taller than the average girl. But the thing is, I don't think most, like on a logical level, girls think they want a tall guy, but you can overcome that by focusing on what you can change and don't focus on what you can't change. And so the thing is, what women are attracted to instinctively is behavior and communication. Not surgery to look tall. Say again? No, someone just commented surgery to look tall. And I said, not that. That's delusional. Yeah. You can get in. Look, I've gotten cosmetic surgery before. I got a fucking nose job. I got a random plasty, right? And so I'm not going to fucking go to Russia and like break my knees to get height in, in, in enhancing surgery. Because that's actually what you have to do if, if you yeah. want to get that surgery. So you got to do it in like Russia or some shit for whatever reason. It's like cheaper there. Mm-hmm. It's like the only place that like actually allows you to do it. Cause it's, it's fucking delusional, bro. To make yourself taller and then you're gonna be like a wheelchair for like a year. <laughs> it's like relearn how to walk. That's fucked up. Why don't you just improve your communication <laughs> skills, your confidence, your charisma, your personality? Your you know, that's what I notice about you, Justin, is uh, you're really loud when you talk to girls. Like I feel like you have to make really? up for the height with your oh. energy. I don't even think about it. I just do it. I just observe it, yeah. Like compared to me, I'm like somewhat, I'm not tall, but I'm, definitely taller than most girls so i feel like i'll tell you if i'm as loud as you it's gonna be way too much yeah if, well you think know? about this right if you're like a six foot three jacked intimidating looking dude and you're really intense and really loud yeah you're gonna freak everyone out yeah right? but if you're but like, if you're a small fucking dude and you're like really shy and like very like he you know i mean like people aren't, aren't gonna be attracted to that that's not gonna be pol- yeah. that's not polarizing or attractive at all whatsoever yeah, so it's like a little bit of a compensation for what... Pretty much. It's not compensation in a bad way. It's a compensation in a way that's actually effective. Yeah. Right? It, it actually works. Mm-hmm. It's not like overcompensation is what I'm trying to say. It's actually compensation that actually works. And the thing is, I don't even think about that, dude. I, I It's just like something that it's... You, you naturally developed it. When you go out a lot and you're like constantly in the dating scene, you're constantly being social, you're naturally going to develop into whatever is that's going to get you the result you're looking for. Yeah. Can I can I tell you something honestly that I noticed? When I didn't have tattoos, I was louder. I just, I was just weird. louder in general to get like people's attention. Uh, but when I got my sleeve tattoos, neck tattoos, I felt going. like naturally I became more chill and I got better responses for pe- from people because if I maintained the same energy, I was too intimidating. Yeah, you would have been too intimidating. Because yeah. now you're like this like Asian dude with blonde hair and tattoos. Like all of a sudden you look like a fucking, you look like you'd be like a fucking Asian mob boss. Right? <laughs> no, look no, at no. this guy. No, like uh, the last girl I thought I was like a Muay Thai, like fucking ninja. <laughs> yeah, so if you're just MMA chill, fighter, like yeah. humble and low key. Yeah, I naturally started to talk less in order to get better response. I feel like the more you go out, you naturally kind of like fit your personality into uh, what, gives you the best response in people. It makes sense. Your personality gets morphed into what people like. I don't know. I don't know. Pros and cons of using Tinder. Pros and cons of using Tinder. Tinder's epic as fuck when it comes to scalability and automation. In terms of the quantity of the girls you can meet. Because think about this, right? 
on a given night out, if you want to go meet girls at the bar, at the club, and you want to become this like social dude, you how many girls, Matt, how many girls do you think you talk to on a given night out at the club? 20. 20 girls on a 20 night 20 plus. Out. You know what I can do? I can 20. go on Tinder. I can use a super boost for 12 hours and I can be seen as by every single girl who's on Tinder in the city in that 12 hours. But without leaving your house each person for like two minutes <laughs> would you rather a bunch of people and spend an insignificant amount of time with them or like a few people and spend like a good time with them well the, the thing with tinder right it's it's like it's a numbers game to a certain degree it's a numbers mm-hmm. game right with meeting people in person it's not really it, it's not as much of a numbers game as with tinder right so the the difference with tinder is like if you just want to get like laid easily and hook up with like subpar dating partners that you don't, because you don't know if you're going to connect with these people on a deeper level or if you're going to be mm-hmm. truly tracking. That could be weird. Yeah. Some of them might be weird. You might not even get along. Right. And then especially, dude, if you're a guy using fucking Tinder, like the 80 20 rule applies. So unless you get my online seduction course, link in bio, link in bio, guys. Um, <laughs> so, hey, unless you get my online seduction course, you're going to be in like the bottom 20% of guys on Tinder. Just, with your average fucking pictures. And so like, you're going to be hooking up with the girls who are like, like under your leak. They're not as attractive as you are. And that's just like the reality with Tinder versus like with actually meeting girls in person or meet, dating in person or meeting people in person. You can actually date people and meet people who you get along with better, who you're more attracted to. And this goes for both men and women, right? Wait, I definitely tuned out. I don't know if this is a pro or a con for Tinder. What are you so like? They, they just got different pros and cons. With, with Tinder, it's like if you want to get you know instant gratification, and if you want to like meet people because you're lonely, then yeah, Tinder's great. But if you want to have like better dating experiences, is just for going sex. out in person hmm, is okay. better. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to disagree with you there because I do use Tinder and I've <laughs> met some pretty nice people through it. Okay. Um, I feel like as long, I don't spend very much time on dating apps. Like I'll literally just message them, say, hi, are you down to meet? Cause I do very much appreciate, um, in person communication. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, but if that's how I have to get out there and reach more people, then yeah, sure. So that's your perspective as a female, oh, the average guy as a person, <laughs> no, no, no. Cause the average guy on Tinder isn't getting as many fucking matches as a cute girls on Tinder. That's what most people fail to realize. So girls are like, oh my God, I fucking love Tinder. Tinder's epic. But guys, you have to go through all this other shit. You have to learn how the algorithm works. You have to perfect your fucking photos. You have to use software to test your photos. You maybe have to edit your photos. You have to pay for boost and super boost and all that shit, which is pretty much like paying for ad space. You got to pay for the premium membership. So that's like- And the photo rate thing that you have. Yeah. Yeah, the- to rate your photos. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's lot. a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot of effort. effort. I wouldn't pay see, for premium See, stuff. the shit that guys have to go through in order to get laid. <laughs> yeah, the, the, shot, the shit guys say, have to go through in order to have like a, you know, active, crazy dating life versus like girls, they just have to kind of show up. It's almost not even fair. But uh, the cool thing <laughs> is because you have to go through all that effort and you have to go through all that, uh, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. trial by fire, is like you have the opportunity to develop yourself into... An outstanding individual. Yeah, it's actually a good thing because you stand out. I feel like you have to be a high quality guy in order to be the type of person who would like go through all that. I get what you're saying. In order to become that guy, in order to go through all those experiences, you become like this incredible version of yourself. So this mm-hmm. is why like a lot of those like fuck boy type dudes are really fucking cool dudes too. Yeah. Maybe they're business owners. Maybe they've traveled all over the fucking world. They've done cool stuff with their life. Are we accepting people on the live? Can I'm going to accept that? people on the live. Just yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's talk to someone. Give me a hi, bro. Hi. Questions. Yes, Matt. <laughs> Count plus. What is that? How do you stop going back to old self-demeaning thinking patterns? Self-demeaning. Once you fix them. I don't know. I think it just takes the discipline. Part of it is like, look, you, yes, you can like mentally discipline yourself to stop thinking negatively. Yeah. But I think it's yeah. a deeper thing. It's, it's inner child trauma. It's, it's it's inner trauma and that's where a lot of negative self beliefs come from so you got to work on that and mm-hmm. then you got to get yourself into like a mindsets that routines don't help. think like that yeah so like routines like positive thinking routines so the best way I know affirmations if you do daily affirmations really powerful way to yeah. get yourself in 
to the fucking zone. Every well, yeah, day. to add on to the trauma, yes, like we can go deeper and talk about that um, because a lot of the negative thoughts in your head, um, it's just pain that hasn't been, that you haven't like grieved or like healed, you know, and then it comes to the surface and it comes as like a negative thoughts. That's and, literally exactly what happens. And you can solve that through meditation or just like being kind to yourself and like letting your body and your, your thoughts to heal. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty much accurate, bro. Good answer. And also uh, I think, uh, surrounding yourself with a positive mind with people who have a positive mindset, like just being around positive people, that you makes know, sense. That people makes who sense. are going on the up, upwards journey. You become people. the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you hang out with fucking winners, become a winner. You know, losers, you become a loser. Yeah. Osmosis. Like you, when you hang around someone, you start thinking like them. So you start adopting their beliefs. Mm. Like if you hang around me and Justin so much, not, not too long, you'll start making as much as we are making and like start talking like us. It's just like instinctive. I mean, if you are like true to your own identity, I don't think you would start to adopt someone else's way of thinking. No, you do. It's, it's, it's nature. In, in you'll order you'll to. adopt the mindsets and the habits. You, you won't change your personality per se. I think you'll change your personality if you hang around. You, I think yeah. you'll change your attitude towards life. Like That's the core right. of who you are will pretty much always stay the same. Yeah. But you're like, let's say you're really negative. You start hanging out with everyone. Everyone you hang out is positive. Mm-hmm. You start naturally being positive. Right, it works the same way. Like, imagine you're just very non-attractive. I think if you start hanging out with a bunch of guys who are really attractive and get a lot of girls, you just become the same thing. You become more attractive mm-hmm. and start getting a lot of girls yourself. If you hang out with a bunch of millionaires, you're gonna eventually become a millionaire. Mm-hmm. So you just pick up so all that behavior. Osmosis. You know, if uh, if a lion hangs around a bunch of sheep all his life, he's just gonna start uh, saying "bah." You know, it's true. It's true. It won't roar. It won't even like learn how to roar because like it never had like. Other people kind of give them. That's a good point. Fair. Yeah. Actually, we got a really good question. Do you think race matters when it comes to dating? What do you think? Race? Race. Race. Ethnic heritage. Uh, I think for a lot of people it does. Well, I guess if people are born in a very like strong or like a very cultural home, it depends on the culture. Because I, my first serious boyfriend was Muslim and I knew like from the jump that we weren't going to end up together, which was like, I guess kind of, I guess I knew what I was getting myself into. Oh my gosh. Ew. I don't know if I want to talk about this. Talk about this. I want to hear I want to hear more. Oops. Shit's juicy. <laughs> this shit's juicy as but, fuck. Um, so what yeah, happened? No. Why did you break up? Did you break up because of like the ethnic yeah. thing and the religion? Broke, yeah. But honestly, he broke up with I, you? Yeah, he did. Shit. How, and like. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I, I dated a girl whose family was Muslim as well, but she was like an atheist. And it, so it was complicated. Her parents couldn't know that we were dating. Yeah. We went out for five years and Are my family didn't even know. You dated his, him for five years. His family didn't even know I existed. Yes, five years. Yeah, I dated this girl for a year. She was like my best friend at the time. Like, Matt, you, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to fucking... Ooh. doesn't matter. Like my first girl, like my first girlfriend. Oh. Yeah, you know what I'm I remember about? her, yeah. And, anyway, so... We all used to go out. We all used to hang out. But yo, dude, her fucking parents had no idea we were fucking date. Like they didn't know that I existed. Same thing. Because like, yeah. So like to a certain degree, race, culture, ethnicity, you know, religion, I think that matters when it comes to dating to a certain degree. Mm. However, if if you're trying to say like, can, does does your race matter? I don't think it really matters. Like I think Mm. a lot of guys are like, oh, I can't get laid because I'm Filipino or I can't get a girlfriend because I'm Indian. It's like, what the fuck? No. No. What what would you say to that, Jess? I'd say that's silly. I mean, you're you. You're made. You're made unique, and I don't know. Matt, what would you say to that? Loved. (laughs) Well, dating is all about demographics, right? You're gonna find one person who's into whatever race you are. Of course. And I'm talking about like obsessed with your race. Well, think about this, right? Like, think about K-pop, right? There's all these like white girls in Western society who love Korean pop music. Yeah. And so they love guys with that look. I'd say like 80 percent of the girls that I I end up like being with, they're into Asian guys. They're either into Asian guys or they're like, you're just like they're fetish for a reason. They just yeah. love Filipino guys. They, they say uh, yellow fever. They have it. What? I have a yellow fever. That's what more, most girls say. Damn. Dengue fever. <laughs> Is that racist? 
So yeah, like if I want to get laid a lot, I'll just uh, go to a place where a lot of girls like love Asian guys. And same with Justin. You know? Well, that's or the thing, anyone, right? So I've been to places like Bali, uh, Mexico City, uh, you know, fucking, I'm trying to think of countries I've been to there. Or Philippines. When I went to the Philippines, I went to Manila. Mm -hmm. Girls fucking love me, dude. My Tinder was going off. And this is before <laughs> I launched my online instruction course. Mm -hmm. This is before I had like the perfect online dating strategy. It was nuts. You have a it perfect was online nuts. dating strategy. My, my online dating is like next level, dude. I don't, I, yeah. it's gone to the point I had to delete Tinder because I just get too many matches and I just, I just spent all my time on Tinder. Wow. I redeveloped social yeah, anxiety. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Dude, the amount of times <laughs> where you, we go to a nightclub, I think this happens very frequently. Like at least mm -hmm. once a week, you're like, oh, like, you meet a girl at a nightclub and be like, oh, we match on Tinder. Yeah, like all the time. <laughs> like I meet girls all the time and like, like, oh yeah, Tinder, what's up? What's up, Tinder? Like, or like I'll like, actually- You wouldn't remember them, girls. but they would remember you. Yeah, of course. No, yeah. Or I'll hang out with girls or I'll go, like, go uh, meet meet a new girl and I'll get their Instagram. And it, it's like, I'm already following them. And I, I, I look at her messages and it's like, I matched on Tinder like eight months ago. That's so funny. All the fuck. And you just time. forgot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Wrong. Following like 2,000 girls on Instagram. That's why I should I get on Tinder. I'm supposed to fucking remember I that. Don't do, I don't do Tinder. I didn't delete Tinder because I would, um, I, I redeveloped my social anxiety because like in order to like meet girls and go on dates, I just had to like press buns on my phone and girls would show up to my house in the suburbs. It's fucking crazy. And so I like deleted my Tinder, moved downtown. And I would just go out every single day to meet people because I didn't want to have social anxiety anymore. That's how we met. Yeah. I met you at a club. Mm -hmm. Just walked up to you. I was like, what's up? I think you're cute. I was nervous too. Thought you're really pretty. Uh, okay. We got more questions. Let's, let's see what of the questions we got. Long questions. <laughs> they want your Instagram. <laughs> What's your Instagram? My Instagram is Jess and Quino. Everyone's like, she's so beautiful. You know, she's crazy. She's not wearing makeup. Oh my God. <laughs> Jess, you're not wearing makeup. You literally took, I saw you take your makeup off. Okay. <laughs> say hi. Hello. Here, don't worry. I'll put a filter on so you look prettier. Ah, uh, how dare you say that? No, we're, I meant that in the most <laughs> respectful way possible. Look at this. Say hi. <laughs> Looks so cute. Hello. Hello. It's so weird. It's, I, you know what I don't like about this camera? What? It's got three. It's got three. No, so you don't know where to look at camera. I feel like I'm being watched. You are being watched. That's the reason why I got the. You're being watched by 15 people right now. <laughs> Um, next topic, Justin. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much out. How do you make a girl laugh? Be funny. <laughs> Be funny. <laughs> Very insightful. Um, I was I deep. Know. Just, it was deep as fuck. I don't know. How do you tell someone to be funny? You, uh, how to be funny? You just. Bro, I just, I mean, I just, honestly, I, I don't, I want I'm not saying the funniest guy. But a lot of girls do tell me, oh my God, you're so funny. Right. Like you are. So funny. I think and you're overly like sarcastic. I don't know how I developed that though. Like it's, it's really just, like, sarcastic. Trolling. I just troll. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what it is. You troll. It's like the the way you ask the questions too, it's like it seems like you're really serious and it's like a known <laughs> yeah. fact. Yeah. But like I, like if someone knows you personally, like he's like he's joking. Yeah. So so last yesterday I was at the spa, right? And I ordered a watermelon juice. And when he brought it, I'm like, wait, is this, is this vegan? And, and he's like, it, it's, no, it's watermelon juice. And I'm like, what's it made out of? And he's what? like, watermelon. And I'm like, I was just fucking with the guy. I was like, this is super right. But like, I said it so seriously that like, he's like, what? Right? And like, everyone was with me. They looked at me like, are you fucking like retarded, dude? Like, what? <laughs> I, I was just trolling the dude. I was just, just like busting his balls. And, and so like, the thing is. You like to say fucked up shit too. <laughs> here's where I think humor comes from mm -hmm. is, at least my humor is something called the indifference threshold where you just stop giving a fuck, stop filtering yourself, and you stop giving a fuck. You just say whatever Ooh, the fuck's That's fair. You just say I whatever's on your mind. I feel like I've gotten funnier, not gotten funnier, but like people have appreciated my humor more now that I live without a filter. Yeah, when you live without a filter and you say whatever is on your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't know. I feel like if you don't like what I have to say, then you don't like me and then... Honestly, I, I kind of struggle with that. Like, I, I always talk to you about it, Justin. It's like, I think around certain people, like, I'm very filtered. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a confidence issue or something. Yeah, probably. It, yeah. I'm only, like, unfiltered around people I feel safe with. Hmm. And, and I wouldn't say it's a confidence issue. It's probably, like, a vulnerability issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, you, you've always kind of been like that, though. You've always been very, like, guarded emotionally. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
I you think that's something that I can change eventually, or I don't know. I think so. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I think so. You want to change it? Yeah. You got like so that. That's the thing, right? In, in order to like be that guy, you kind of just like really got to put yourself out there with strangers, right? Yeah. And like, it's like now you're just trusting in random people that you don't yeah. know that you never met. I think a lot of it's just the them. honesty and just like practicing radical honesty. Practice yes. radical honesty and vulnerability. It's like maybe saying if if I feel like saying something and it, it's uncomfortable saying it, I should just do it anyway. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just fucking yeah. say it. Like, That's the thing. I'll just say whatever the fuck's on my mind, even if it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Like if I like a girl, I'll just tell her. I like Honestly, you. Honestly, that's Take something I learned from you, from you, Justin. Before, before I started hanging out with you, uh, just recently, I would actually not tell girls that I like them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. And then I just, I would just hang around Justin all the time. He's like, um, I would just hear him say over and over again, I really like you, you're really cute, you're really hot. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I've never been that honest with someone I just met. And then I started practicing doing that and I've gotten like really good responses. Mm-hmm. Just being honest and open. Well, yeah, and saying I mean, what like, I feel about the person I'm talking yeah, to. Or it, it, it. it works with like, kind of like the opposite too. If I don't like them, I'd say I don't like, yeah. <laughs> I don't like that you're doing this. I, I tell girls like that you. all the time. You're annoying. Dude, you saw, dude, you saw me, you brought girls over my house the other day and I kicked them out. Well, I didn't kick him out, but I, I like pressured them to stop being weird and just like go home. Yeah. You, they were being annoying though. Yeah. Yeah. What were they doing that was annoying? I uh, talking to Mike, but yeah, no, they're, they're, I was hanging what out with this girl and annoying. she was just, uh, she was, she was like, so women do something called a shit test or a congruence test where like, if a girl likes you, she'll constantly just like throw shade at you and kind of like almost like poke fun at you. But the way this girl was doing it was just straight disrespectful. And like, I was like, what the fuck? And, and so like, at first it's like, okay, it's cute and it's quirky. But after a while, I was just like, yo, like you're being so fucking weird. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Like, Especially who, who it's, it's at your place. Yeah. You know, it's at your no, place. Like, I have no problem calling people on their shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is like, like what's wrong? So like, I have no problem. Just like, why are you being weird? Why are you being strange? Why are you talking like this? T- setting a boundary. And I think a lot of women act ratchet and psycho because they're not used to having guys that set boundaries. They're not used to having guys being like, hey, shut the fuck up or I'm kicking out my house. So mm-hmm. here's, you know, Christina? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, the little blonde girl? Dropping. And uh, so I met her at a party in the summer to a girl I'd hooked up with. And she was at my house and she was just being really fucking weird. Like she was stirring drama. She was like a little like evil manipulative plot twist girl. Like she was, I could tell she was being a shit. Dist- I saved her number as shit disturber. And I even messed her. I'm like, why are you just shit? Dist-? Multiple people brought it up to me that she was a shit disturber. And so I pretty much told her, I'm like, look, if you ever act like this, I can't have you at my parties anymore. Right. Setting boundaries is something most guys don't have. Yeah. Because they're not living in abundance. So yeah. if they set the boundary, they're scared of like a losing we, the girls. We do, we do kick out girls all the time from, from your parties. Yeah. Because like if yeah. people are acting up, you got to get rid of them, dude. You can't oh, have that energy yeah. on you. You know what I mean? Whether it's a cute girl or a yeah, cool Especially dude if they're being rude to your friend. Like remember that one girl that, that you had to kick out because she was I, being I, rude to me. I can't remember her name, but um, it was uh, fucking Paige's friend. Yeah, Paige's yeah. friend. Yeah. So I met this girl Paige at the club, really cool girl, and uh, she's actually like in her circle now. She's actually she was supposed to rent out my place while I was in South America, but I canceled my trip. And long story short, she brought a friend to my place, and this friend was just being a fucking weird chick. And Matt shows up after the club. He's at a different club. Oh no, you wait. You were at the same club actually that we were at, and. This girl was just being really rude to my buddy, Matt. And I'm like, hey, uh, you're being rude to my buddy. I've been friends with him eight years. I don't fucking know you like that. Like, you got to be nice or you're going to leave. And she's like, no, I don't want to be nice. I'm like, all right, that's, that's fine. You don't have to be nice. Then you have to no. leave. <laughs> you have to please leave my house. She's like, okay, I'm leaving. All right, see you around. Yeah, and then she started like talking shit. I'd be like, fuck you, fuck this place anyways. Like trying to like, make herself look cool. But yo, like everyone's just looking at you. Like you're getting kicked out. <laughs> you know? It's cringe as fuck. Yeah. Do we have questions? 21 question. What's your favorite color? My favorite color. Is it brown? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I do really oh, like wearing shit. brown. Do you like wearing brown? <laughs> well, well, baby, you can wear brown anytime. You're so funny. <laughs> I like warm colors. <laughs> I wish I got your face when you said that. It's so fucking jokes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy fuck. I'm just teasing, guys. No, me, re- me and Jess are just friends. We she's, just, re- she's wearing my sweater, though. But, uh, me? Jess, yeah, I'm you. I feel like a puppy. 
was telling her she's puppy vibes. Yeah. What's your opinion on psychedelics for healing past trauma? I think it's incredible. Mushrooms, LSD, all that beautiful things. I don't want to talk about it here, but yeah, give it a go. I have a mushroom tattoo on my leg, just so you guys know. <laughs> People have no idea. I have a mushroom tattoo, a psilocybin mushroom tattoo on my leg. Date tips. Yo, fun fact. What? I just found out one of the girls that I was hooking up with mm-hmm. has 211 million views on Pornhub. That's wild. Are you still hooking up with her? Uh, No, not really. When's the last time you, you saw her? Uh, like over a year ago. Dude, let's get her on the fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, super random. Uh, food? What, what do you want to end it with? Do you want to like just talk a little bit? Yeah, let's just talk a little bit. Motivational speech? Matt, give a motivational speech. <laughs> motivational let's, speech. Let's end it with some motivation. So right now we're in COVID. Omicron variant is going on. So we might be expecting another lockdown very soon. I'm, I'm not expecting it, but it could happen. You know, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen in the world. But I feel like we've made a decision that if it does happen... We're still going to try to like live our lives, you know? Fuck yeah, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm going to be partying, pulling bitches every night. Yeah. And Jess too. You can come. You can tag along and be one of the side bitches. Um, yeah. You down? I am leaving the country. Right? <laughs> or we can just leave the country. You know what I mean? We'll see. I, 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 I don't think I'm going to leave the country, honestly. I, I was like- the, There's a lockdown? Yeah. No, dude. Even if there's a lockdown, I'll probably just stay. I don't give a fuck. Like, no, I, 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 I used to travel Toronto. and shit, but we I'm like, Toronto. Toronto's sick, dude. Toronto's Even so during sick. lockdowns, Toronto was great. Like, Tinder game, next yeah. level. Long story short, guys, go out, live your life, kill it, pimp it, develop yourself to be the best version of yourself. My name's Justin Mark, Matt Levine, and we're out here with a beautiful guest. Just so yeah, thanks for know. listening, guys. Um, I uh, hope you tune in. This is the second episode. Subscribe. And what would you like to hear for the next episode? Leave comments and questions down below into the next episode. Subscribe, click the bell notification for new said. videos. <laughs> Leave That's a little... thumbs up. <laughs> Leave a thumbs up or your mother's going to die. She's going to die in a fire. That's and fun. who would you like to see as a guest? Ooh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's fun. And go follow us on Instagram. Go follow Jess on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Uh, my name's, well, my name's, oh my gosh, Jess and Aquino. Yeah, Jess is super cool. Can't believe you stayed up this late with us. Thank you so much. Follow me on Instagram, Drunk yeah, Justin 2. The 2. <laughs> Follow Matt. What's your Instagram, Matt? Matt.Levine. Matt. Ooh. All right, baby. We're out.